I mean, we're all going to die someday. And if you're going to pick some place to die, then why not Mars? Uh, so I am like horrified. Try me, <laughs> Cybertruck. Oh, oh whoa! Okay. Oh, he oh! Won. What? There's no way. Ooh, it's like Super Mario Galaxy. Who's this dude? What the hell is this happening? Neuralink mind control activate. <laughs> Come on! I was right there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Throughout the month of August of 2024, I created one of the greatest cinematic masterpieces of our generation. How exactly did this experience come together? Let me take you behind the scenes of how I developed the Elon Musk boss battle. Hey, quick disclaimer. For all you people who aren't interested in actually playing the game for the first time and going into it blind, now's the time to do it. I've kind of already spoiled it with all this previous uh, montage stuff, but you still get a sense of, of uh, expectations being broken. It's available on the link in the description, and you can play it right now on the web browser with any device that's connected to the internet. All right, let's get started. The idea clicked when I realized that almost every single one of Elon Musk's companies and inventions naturally lends itself to an interesting story or combat element. I organized it into four parts. Part one, a super high-speed car chase in a Tesla Roadster while getting chased by a Cybertruck. Part two, a mid-flight SpaceX rocket infiltration, stealth mode. Part three, a flamethrower battle with Neuralink mind-controlled zombies, and part four, a tussle with Elon on the red planet just outside the colony. Let's jump into the first section. I started by grabbing the Roadster and Cybertruck models from TurboSquid and popping them into Unity. To make it actually drive, I just copy-pasted the code from one of my previous videos and substituted the toy car model in there for the Roadster. There was just one small oversight. Hey, I have seen this menu before. What the hell? Somehow I managed to bring the pause menu from that game alongside with the rest of the code. I don't know why it was in the code folder, but it was. I did change one thing though, and it came to me actually from a commenter called WolfCub8596, who suggested that I make the camera a little bit less rigid. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, there actually are people giving intelligent, smart, and constructive comments on this website. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. The FOV increase, done. The camera kind of leaning into the turns a little bit, done. Then I created a highway which auto-generates itself, the buildings, and the cars infinitely. And already it's pretty fun to play, but now it's time to add some pressure. I made it so that the Cybertruck accelerates straight towards you no matter where you are or how fast you're going. It has absolutely no top speed and will catch you even at 200 miles per hour or faster. Oh, uh, also it weighs 10 times as much as all the other cars on the road, so anyone in its path of destruction will be completely obliterated. And sometimes it flies. <laughs> I have no idea why, but it's very funny, so I kept it in. Anytime you crash into an NPC car, a wall, or the Cybertruck hits you from behind, you take some damage. But you can repair it by collecting these wrenches which are scattered along the way. But if you suck so much that you just keep missing them all, then you'll crash for good. The overall speed and intensity of this section is so high, and I wanted the music to match that. So I started with like a disco-y house kind of pattern, and then cranked up the BPM to 201. Then I added some synths which go like, wah, 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 and the rest just kind of built off of that. Now I just gotta add some finishing touches. I wanted to have a little bit more happening than just a bunch of cars crashing into each other, so I created this AI voice assistant called Ego, who talks to you as you drive. I looked around for a good text-to-speech voice option online and found this website called Love Voice. I was playing around with some of the voice options that they have, and they were all kind of similar. But one of them in particular stood out to me, and his name is Prabhat. Hello everyone. If my accent bothers you, you can go to Naraka. So what happens when the distance counter reaches zero? Unfortunately, by the time you get there, Elon has escaped through a rocket. But Ego has some tricks up his sleeve. It's a good thing I prepared the super eject function. Hold on, and grab your space suit. To contrast the super fast section that we just completed, this one is a little bit more slow and thoughtful and puzzle-like. 
your objective is to infiltrate the spaceship and you spawn right by the door, but it doesn't open from the outside. So here's what you do. You cause a distraction, which lures some crew member from the inside to come out and address it, but he leaves the door open, which gives you the perfect opportunity to sneak in. The way you navigate around the exteriors of the ship is you just walk on it like it's uh, Mario Galaxy. Obviously, it's very unrealistic, but I think the effect is pretty cool. Getting this effect to work required the use of polar coordinates. <clears throat> The rocket is positioned at the origin, and gravity always points towards it, and the character has to be rotated accordingly so he always stands upright. The first thing most people did when given free range to roam around the ship is try to walk directly towards the engine, jump into it, and kill themselves. <laughs> nah, you can't, you, can't, boy. you can't kill Don't yourself. Don't even try it's, me. It's, Don't it's, even it's, try me. Now, I thought of this, so I put an invisible wall there to prevent it, so no one was actually able to pull it off. The music for this section you'd expect to be a slow, puzzly kind of thing, but I made it a funk track. The distraction that I mentioned before is actually a breaker box, which for some reason is on the outside of the ship. You go over here and you open it up and you start messing with all the switches. What darnation? That guy comes outside and comes over to where the breaker box is and starts fixing things. And a lot of plate testers in this section got a little freaked out by his appearance. So everybody tried to push him into the flame of the engine. <laughs> now I have an invisible wall set up so that wasn't possible, but I like the idea so much that I actually added it in after the fact. Now you can push him right into the fire and he shoots out into oblivion. But anyway, he left the door open for you, so that's your chance to get in the ship and out of this section. And now, welcome to Mars. 100 million miles from Earth, you've cornered Elon Musk in his own Mars colony. Now all you have to do is find him and take him out. By the way, the reason why it's been saying Elam everywhere is because I don't really know what the laws are regarding using famous people in your games, so I'm just going to go with a parody name just to be safe. But anyway, you walk around and you find some keys which open some doors, and you overhear a conversation between Elon Musk and one of his crew members. Well, I was just doing the post-journey headcount, and we're one more than usual. Alright, they're probably trying to blend in. Just be on the lookout for anything suspicious. I created the sound of Elon Musk's voice using an AI tool, which is just a very fancy text-to-speech. The bad news is that it comes out kind of robotic. But the good news is that Elon Musk kind of talks like a robot anyway, so it doesn't matter. It all worked. Eventually, you get to the self-destruct switch and you destroy the entire colony. Then a lot of things happen in quick succession. In a panic, Elon activates the secret feature of Neuralink that all of his employees have, which is mind control. They all turn into zombies and they're after one person, you. The shock caused by the explosion reveals the boring company flamethrower, which is going to be your best friend as you fight your way through all of them. An alarm goes off, which quickly turns into a music track. I actually synced up the music with the alarm and used the beeping and buzzing as an instrument. Unfortunately, none of the playtesters noticed though, so I guess it was, it was too smooth. I wanted to create a really intense atmosphere for this final flamethrower battle, so I turned up the bloom on the fire extremely high. I gotta say, the lights are f***ing blinding. Well, maybe a little too high. As you clear out the entire hallway, you get to the end, which leads us to the final section. So you are the one who has destroyed my life's greatest accomplishment. For this, you will pay. Are you ready? Because now it's time for the final battle. It's basically a very, very dumbed down version of a Dark Souls battle, but there's no rolling. You just walk around with WASD and you punch with space and that's it. The only twist is that you have an oxygen meter, and anytime you move or punch, it uses oxygen. This allowed for an optional way to win, where you can kind of just dodge Elon as he moves around and tries to get you, and eventually he starves himself of oxygen, and you can win that way. At first, I thought this was a really creative solution, but the thing was, is that none of the playtesters went this route. <laughs> I thought I could beat him in a button off. It's coming to me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's coming to me! Yeah, that's right! <laughs> Or other people snuck around to his backside and punched from behind where he can't reach you. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, what's up? We, we, we. But no matter how you do it, once you beat him, you get to the last part of the game, which is just this final cutscene. Just like that, you've taken Mr. Musk to the cleaners. Did I overdo the drama a little bit? Probably. 
Now, I'm not too up to date with current events, so at the time of making this, I didn't know how unpopular Elon Musk is right now. So my friend convinced me to add an extra little line to make his departure a little bit less tragic. Now, this game is made like total garbage, and there's just bug after bug after bug. When you first boot up the game, it just starts you right away. There's no main menu, there's no start button, there's also no functioning pause menu, settings menu, or anything like that. The highway auto generation program doesn't fit the pieces together properly, so sometimes you get a little bump in the road which shoots you way into the air. Okay. Holy shit! Oh! Send me home! <laughs> Did you see that? Sometimes the cars spawn on the railing, and they don't even follow the laws of traffic. If at any point you want to, you can hit a U-turn and start flooring it backwards. There's no highway back there, so you just fall off into the infinite abyss of the skybox. Whoa! Oh my gosh. <laughs> I found a bug. And if you're more strategic about the way you fall off, you can drop down onto this extra patch of grass and drive under the highway and have a jousting match with the Cybertruck. But perhaps the worst bug of all was discovered by my friend Sam. In the Mars section, if you walk against the wall at a certain angle, you can clip through the door. Oh. Wait, what? Wait, get out of there. <laughs> wait, wait, no. Oh, shit. But then you can do it again, and you can clip outside and just walk on Mars. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> There's no way to get back inside, but you can trigger the cutscene to the final battle. But once you get through the fight and kill him, Elon may just die in an interesting way. He's done for. He's done, he died standing up. <laughs> yeah. Whew. What a banger. Alright, so there's a couple announcements before you go. The first thing is that if you like this video, obviously like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You knew that already. But if you want to suggest some ideas for the next video, you can drop that in the comment below. But don't submit stupid ideas like, oh, now you should do the Christina Aguilera boss battle or the Oprah Winfrey boss battle because that's not really a game. Like, what are you going to do? Like a talk show host game with Oprah Winfrey? I mean, I guess you could have like a dialogue tree there and sort of like impress the audience. But then that's a, that's a full game. So you have to flesh that out. So do that. I'd love to see all your ideas. The second thing is that I've created a Patreon where you can support me at the link in the description. There's three tiers right now. You have the first one, which is the supporter, which is just your name in the credits. The second one is Playtester, which gives you early access to the games. And the third one is Playtester Plus, which gives you the option to play the game, want to call with me for the chance to be in one of the videos if your reactions are funny and, and you make great suggestions. If you're not interested in committing to a month-to-month -month subscription based donation, you can just do a one-time and buy me a coffee at the link below. The soundtrack is on Bandcamp as always. Uh, Discord links in the description, get in there. And uh, also one more thing, I, I've been doing all this stuff by myself. I do all of the voiceover by myself, I do the, the programming, I do the, the 3D modeling. And so far it's been quite a lot of work. If you want to get involved with this, I'm going to create a new channel in the Discord where you can submit all your artwork and your, maybe your story ideas, game ideas and stuff. And maybe we're going to see if maybe we could turn this into a collaborative effort. And uh, maybe I can even pay you one day <laughs> if I have enough uh, finances. But for at the moment, don't, don't count on it. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Plate suits are actually whatever the opposite of flame resistant. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they're flame con conductive. Flammable is the word. <laughs> oh, yeah.